days ago, Jeremy Fowler of ESPN, he dropped an article that went through all 32 teams and he listed them in terms of still major contenders all the way down to teams who need to do a full rebuild. And the part about the Baltimore Ravens, let's just get right into it. He listed them as still major contenders. And let's read. He says, what's next? Baltimore is plug and play. The Ravens have just about everything they need to make another run. A major decision looms on defensive tackle Justin Matabike, one of the most coveted free agents after a 13-sack season. Baltimore typically lets free agents test the market, but he would be going fast, absent the franchise tag or a long-term deal. That is true. Eric DaCosta, we watching, my friend. We know you got it, though. Uh, anyway, says some personnel people inside the league believe, here we go right here, that the Ravens will target a running back with pedigree in free agency. So not just anybody, but a running back that is established. Somebody who's been one of them guys before or may still be one of them guys now. Continuing, Baltimore has a few tough salary cap decisions, but should be able to keep most of his veteran base intact. And that is true. Now, we, of course, know the Baltimore Ravens have been linked to names such as Derrick Henry. Remember last year when the Baltimore Ravens almost traded for Derrick Henry, but everything ended up falling apart at the last second. Uh, they've also been linked to guys like Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, uh, Josh Jacobs. And we're going to talk about what this could possibly mean for the Baltimore Ravens with them being linked to a running back that has been like that recently. Before we do, Team Keep It Clean, we are at 73,599 subscribers right now. So we are 401 subscribers away from 74K. Oh, I'm over here rhyming and stuff like that. All right, but anyway, subscribe to the channel. Let's get to 74,000 subscribers. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not one single update. And also leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a lot. I, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. always love y'all feedback. I appreciate y'all always commenting on the videos, always leaving likes on the videos and just showing support to the channel day in, day out. I love you. Thank you. Now, with the Baltimore Ravens, um, they have been linked to Derrick Henry a lot, a whole lot. Uh, I know there are a lot of Ravens fans that are for it, and there are a lot of Ravens fans that are against it. But one thing, when you think about Derrick Henry that just continues to always amaze me is his production. And to me, it doesn't make any sense how productive Derrick Henry is. Um, and then I was talking to my guy Jason from Huddle Up Films the, the, the other day, and he's talking about how Derrick Henry, for this scheme, the zone running scheme that the Baltimore Ravens run, he would be such a great fit for it. And I was like, oh, okay, now right, let's get it, baby. But anyway, um, with Derrick Henry, you think about, whenever you think about the Tennessee Titans, who's the first person you think about? It ain't Javon, Javon Curse. I mean, it used to be back days ago. It used to be Steve McNair, it would be Eddie George. Uh, but now, you, when you think about the Tennessee Titans, the first person you think about is Derrick Henry. So if that's the first person you think about when you think about the Tennessee Titans, imagine what all the defenses that are going against them, who's the first person that they think about? It's the same person. Spoiler alert. So with that being said, for him to still continue to be as productive as he's been, to me, it doesn't make any sense. Because the Titans, like, they ain't been no special team recently. They ain't had this all-world offensive line or anything like that. They ain't had this all-world offense. Or but for Derrick Henry, just we'll go over the past – I mean, we'll go since 2018 because that's been uh, that, that that can establish some consistency. 2018, he had 1,059 rushing yards, averaged 4.9 yards a carry, 12 touchdowns. 2019, 303 carries, 1,500 yards, averaged 5.1 yards a carry, 16 touchdowns. 2020, 378 carries, 2,027 yards, averaged 5.4 yards a carry, 17 touchdowns. Oof, my goodness. 2021, 219. Uh, C carries 937 yards, average 4.3 yards a carry, 10 touchdowns. 2022, three, and again, we, we, what we always hear about Derrick Henry, oh, man, he's older. He, he keeps getting older. Obviously, he keeps getting older because you can't get younger, but he's going to get worn down. He's going to fall off, but he just keeps on producing. 2021, 219 carries, 937 yards, 4.3 yards per carry, 10 touchdowns. 2022, 349 attempts. 1,500 yards, 4.4 yards per carry, 13 touchdowns. And this year, the Tennessee Titans, he ran for 280 times, a lot, over 1,100 yards, 4.2 yards per carry, and 12 touchdowns. So this, this man just, he just keeps producing. Now, um, with Derrick Henry, the thing that I think about, a couple things. 
I would not mind if Derrick Henry was on the Baltimore Ravens. I think he could do good with the Baltimore Ravens. But when you think about that, you look at those numbers and you look at that production, then you think about if Derrick Henry was with the Ravens, he wouldn't be the focal point. With the Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry was the focal point. They know, hey, Derrick Henry is getting that ball. They know he's getting the ball. But with the Baltimore Ravens, like, you, yeah, Derrick Henry could be out there, but that ball could go to so many other people, which is a beautiful thing and a beautiful problem to have, even though it's not really a problem. But anyway, um, Derrick Henry could feast with the Baltimore Ravens. Him being a Baltimore Raven would make life so much easier for him and for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, with Derrick Henry, um, my concern. Now, and, and you know what? Let, let's go through all the positives, and then we'll go through the negatives, uh, the possible negatives about the running backs. And what I think is probably the most underrated thing about each of these guys. Uh, with Derrick Henry, again, that would be the positive. With a guy like Alvin Kamara, I think he would fit this offense perfectly as well. Alvin Kamara, um, Catching passes out of the backfield, we know that the Baltimore Ravens have done a much better job overall uh, uh, involving the checkdown game. Maybe in the AFC Championship, going to improve a little bit, but they this year the checkdown game has definitely been there a lot. That's Alvin Kamara all day with the screens. He's like a little receiver out there, and just his style of play will fit the Baltimore Ravens good as well. Um, you think about Saquon Barkley, just how explosive he is, how he could take a two-yard gain, turn it to a sixty-yard gain. Like that. That man is just amazing. And then Josh Jacobs. I think he's just such a uh, a well-rounded running back. Um, and I feel like for him, I can only list him on the positive side. I don't really see any negatives with uh, Josh Jacobs like that. But anyway, um, when you think about the negatives, when I think about the negatives with any of these four running backs, uh, with Derrick Henry, um, first and second down back. What the Tennessee Titans did, and I'm not sure if you could teach an old dog new tricks or whatnot. Maybe, who knows, but what the Tennessee Titans did, they made it so obvious. Because on running downs, first and second down, Derrick Henry was out there. You saw number 22. Passing down, <laughs> hey, big fella, come over here. Come to the sideline for a minute. Let me talk to you. They would take Derrick Henry off the field for passing downs. So that kind of lets us know, like, the pass protection ain't good. Catching passes out of the backfield, that's not really his thing. So that would be something where we learn, I don't know, my friend. And, I, ooh, yeah, so that, that part would be a little concerning because that could be some giveaways, some possible giveaways for Derrick Henry. Or, hey, maybe he gets with the right coaching staff and, and they help him improve his pass protection, catching pass out of back. Hey, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Well, we maybe we might see. But anyway, that would be a, a, a negative on Derrick Henry. With Alvin Kamara, um, the negative would be just the cap hit. The, the cap hit. I know he got like a crazy cap hit, especially over the next two years. I think his contract runs for the next two years. So the cap hit is just crazy high right now now if he were to be released from new orleans then it's like oh okay there you go but if it were to be via trade then yeah that probably ain't gonna happen saquon barkley mm. saquon barkley y'all already know what the negative on him is it's injuries that's it man it's injuries he can literally do everything and i hate it for him too man because he is just such an amazing running back but the injuries man because he can catch passes out of the backfield you send him on a little wheel route he'll catch the ball he he can run he can go through the tackles he could take it to the outside he can do everything at a high level but the injuries man they they just they change everything for him in a bad way man so it's like with him if you were to sign a saquon barkley we would love it but there would just be that fear so I think that's where the money can get kind of funny with Saquon Barkley. We'll see what happens with him in free agency, though. And again, with Josh Jacobs, he's been healthy. He's been productive. Like, I, I feel, for Josh Jacobs, I feel like there's not really a knock on Josh Jacobs at all. But <clears throat> what all four of those running backs have in common and something that I feel like is extremely underrated and, and something that would benefit the Baltimore Ravens in a major way if they were to get any of those guys like Jeremy Fowler originally mentioned in the article that we read earlier, it would be a running back with pedigree. It would be a running back that had been established in the NFL. It would be a running back that had been respected and has been there and done that and got his as a running back in this league. And the reason I feel like that is extremely important is because the Baltimore Ravens, it would be somebody that they would have to pay some significant money to. I don't think they would go crazy, crazy with it, but it would be somebody that they paid a significant amount of money to. So when you pay somebody a significant amount of money, you usually want to use them. You usually want to involve them. So 
I would think, and I would I actually, I would hope that if it came playoff time, if it came crunch time, if it came down to it, and the Baltimore Ravens were in the playoffs, and it's like, hey, we're paying this running back a lot of money. How about we use him? That would obviously change everything about these Baltimore Ravens. Because, again, we go back to 2019. The running backs were Gus Edwards. It was Mark Ingram. I hurt Mark Ingram, though, because he had, I think, like a high ankle sprain, something like that. But they didn't really run those running backs. The, the, the running backs got nine carries, a total of nine carries. One running back had six carries, and the other one had three. And it was between Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram. So they got nine carries in 2019 in that, in that infamous playoff game against Derrick Henry and the Titans, by the way. Um, and then, of course, this year they got six. So, But I think when you look in the backfield, like with Gus Edwards, <clears throat> Gus Edwards is cool. Gus Edwards is nice, but I just feel like the Ravens, they never fully respected Gus Edwards as that guy at the running back position. And, and you could tell that because by the way that they use him or really by the way that they didn't use him. It's the same way with Justice Hill. They don't respect him as that guy uh, at the running back position. Um, and then with Keaton Mitchell, uh, he was out there doing this, but then he unfortunately got hurt. Uh, with J.K. Dobbins, they tried to give him the keys, but he just kept getting hurt. So the Ravens have, they haven't really had a significant in investment in the running back position to where they like, hey, we got to have this guy that we got to play. No, because it's it's been really cheap there. Because, again, a second-round pick, J.K. Dobbins, Keaton Mitchell, undrafted rookie free agent, Gus Edwards, undrafted rookie free agent, Justice Hill, he was a fourth-round pick. So you, the last investment you really had there was probably uh, Mark Ingram because they signed him to that three-year, $15 million deal where he's getting five mil per. But that's, that's been it, really. So with the Baltimore Ravens, if they are to acquire – one of these four running backs or just whatever running back they ended up getting, and he it does have some pedigree to his name, I think that could really be a big game changer for Baltimore, especially come playoff time. Because we know regular season, the running back's going to get there, and then I'm sure they're still going to do running back by committee. I would still expect them to do that. But playoff time, that's when it's a real game changer, in my opinion. Because that's when... Everything counts that much more. For an example of what I'm talking about, we look at Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams, they signed Marcus Williams a couple years ago, free agent. They signed him to this big money deal, and I, and I loved it. Um, and Marcus Williams, he showed up. He unfortunately got hurt both years. I don't know what's been going on with that. But Marcus Williams is their big money free agent at the free safety position from a couple years ago. Marcus Williams, he got hurt both years. But then this year, he got hurt. They had Geno Stone. Geno Stone was in there doing his thing. And Geno Stone was a cheap option at the position uh, because he's not making nearly as much as Marcus Williams, at least not yet. <coughs> but he went out there and he was killing it, just picking off every quarterback that he went against and just doing an amazing work. Marcus Williams gets slightly healthy. What did the Baltimore Ravens do? They went to that big money acquisition. They went to that big free agent acquisition at the free safety position. They said, Geno, look, we know you've been doing your thing, but... We paid this guy a lot of money here to play the position, so yeah, he's up. That's what I could foresee the Baltimore Ravens doing, and I, I would hope that they would do it if it came playoff time. Not necessarily taking away snaps from a productive running back, but actually being forced and actually realizing, hey, we, we can use this guy. We're paying this guy all this money, so we got to use him, right? Right. 